The Bolsheviks, they seized power in Petrograd near the end of 1917. But who were they? Where did they originate from? What were their ideas? What was their approach towards the revolution? More about this in a new Factions video, in which I'm gonna talk about the Bolshevik party. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back on the channel. And by the way, if you happen to be new, my name is Stefan, I'm a history teacher. I'm Dutch and I like to hustle history for you. And if you liked it as well, then consider subscribing. And if you do so, also hit that notification bell so you will become part of the hustle. Let's start. The Bolsheviks were a left-wing faction that came from the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party. That party was founded near the end of the 19th century. In 1903, their second congress, outside Russia, in Brussels actually, took place and a split occurred. Winning by a hair, that was the party that would name themselves the majority, the Bolsheviks. Then there were also those who lost, the losers, and they called themselves the minority, the Mensheviks. Now with hindsight, it was foolish of the Mensheviks to call themselves as such. It settled them with the permanent image of a minority party. Interesting enough, did you know that Leon Trotsky was initially part of the Mensheviks, but would later switch sides to the Bolsheviks. The two sides differed on the fundamental issue of what constituted a revolutionary party and what kind of social movement it should hope to form. The year before this, Vladimir Lenin, who became the leader of the Bolsheviks, he wrote a pamphlet, What is to be done? in which he advocated for a different approach towards the revolution if you compare it with traditional Marxism. According to traditional Marxists, the revolution had to be carried out by a proletariat, in other words, labors. However, Russia, and Lenin knew this, was partially industrialized, so there was not a big labor movement, there was not a big proletariat, and thus he changed his approach. He advocated for a vanguard of professional revolutionaries who had to seize power. The Mensheviks, they were against Lenin's ideas and wanted a more broadly based grassroots party. They were in favor of a revolution but wanted the bourgeois since Russia hadn't developed a capitalist society with a large labor class. Lenin, he mistrusted the masses. Socialist consciousness, he had written in What is to be done? cannot exist among the workers. This can be introduced only from without. This mistrust of democracy was to form the basis of Lenin's centralist approach to the trade unions, the Soviets and all the other mass-based organizations after 1917. The masses should in his view be no more than instruments of the party. Critics of Lenin saw that a centralized party would lead to a dictatorship. So what was the Bolshevik stance towards a democracy? Well, simply put, they saw it as a means to an end. The Bolsheviks were in favor of councils, Soviets, congresses, committees and conferences before they were in charge. They served as a symbol of the voice of the people and the Bolsheviks needed a popular following to generate popular sentiment in order to gain power. Now some Bolsheviks, they believed they were acting out of the will of the people and therefore considered them Democrats. Yet, after the October Revolution had taken place, all these previously mentioned instruments were either dismantled or transformed into instruments of rule by the Bolsheviks. And the same goes for cooperation with other socialist factions, such as the Mensheviks or the SRs, socialist revolutionaries, as long as they could help in gaining power. In other words, as long as they could serve the revolution, they were of need. But at the end, they were a means to an end. Now this all doesn't mean that Lenin exercised absolute power over the party. He was the most forceful character, yes, um, but he couldn't just impose his will. Often he had fierce debates with other members of the Bolshevik party, such as Lev Kamenev and Grigory Zinoviev, but he had no true rival in force of character. And Lenin was not fully ideological, he was also pragmatic. He tested and discarded slogans and tactics. He was ideological and flexible at the same time. He was neither tolerant nor democratic. 
considering those who disagreed with him idiots and fools. The mechanisms of democracy nevertheless stood him in a good stead as a springboard to power. During the February Revolution, which in a sense was a combination between a proletariat and a bourgeois revolution, the Bolsheviks played a role on a smaller stage. The leader, Vladimir Lenin, he was in exile at the moment and the other Bolsheviks were busy in the factories and therefore played a role on a smaller scale. Lenin returned to Russia on April 3rd. He was greeted by a crowd and as he moved towards the Bolshevik headquarters, he gave speeches at different intersections. What he was good at was breaking down difficult to understand topics in simple terms and repeating and repeating and repeating these terms until he had his audience captive. The next day he issued his April thesis in which he denounced the provisional government and he denounced the war with Germany. At that moment these ideas were too radical to be mainstream. Lenin's methods were agitative. In other words, the tone of the Bolsheviks was fierce and they made use of the already existing communication channels within the former Russian Empire. Telephones, newspapers, their newspaper was called Pravda which means truth, telegraphs and post. After the terrible military defeat at the hands of the Germans during the Kerensky Offensive. Then strikes and demonstrations followed in Petrograd and the provisional government restored order closing down the Bolshevik newspaper. Lenin had to escape to Finland which was autonomous, he was safe there and Leon Trotsky, he was arrested. After the failed Kerensky offensive where the provisional government leader did a futile attempt to defeat the Germans on the eastern front of the first world war, the July crisis occurred. Radicalism was rampant as Bolshevik slogans were before too mainstream now became widely used such as peace, land and bread and all power to the Soviets. After the failed Kornilov coup, which became known as the Kornilov Affair, where the Russian commander tried to seize power in Petrograd, the Bolsheviks gained more and more popularity. Their slogans were now mainstream, as they tirelessly hawked the Bolshevik IDs on the front and in the factories. And it was in October or November on the new calendar that they made their move. I made an in-depth video about that. After the Bolshevik seizure of power, they eventually signed the Brest-Litovsk Peace Treaty with the Central Powers in March 1918. They later adopted the name the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. They also unleashed the Red Terror in which countless alleged enemies of the revolution were arrested, tortured and executed by the secret police, the Cheka. The question remains, why did the party hold? amidst all the political chaos? Well this is perfectly answered by Laura Engelstein. The Bolsheviks were ruthless and uncompromising from day one. Leading Bolsheviks disagreed and argued with each other over tactics. Key decisions met with resistance, notably the timing of the October coup and the acceptance of Press Litovsk, but discipline held. Lenin remained the center of authority, even when challenged. The SRs split. The Mensheviks split. The Bolsheviks, though sometimes divided, did not split. They created organizations, they operated simultaneously on many levels to mobilize and direct, to punish and penalize. But many people do still buy in the myth of Judeo-Bolshevism, the idea that all the Bolsheviks are Jews or that all the Jews are Bolsheviks. And I get a lot of these comments and I all always answer them with a quote from historian Arlendo Fajas, which I then copy paste into the comment. But I wanted to give you this quote to you. It must never be forgotten that while many revolutionaries were Jews, relatively few Jews were revolutionaries. It was a myth of the anti-Semites that all the Jews were Bolsheviks. The Trotskys made the revolution and the Bronsteins pay the bills. Thanks to my patrons, you see on screen and a special thanks to Joan, Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rock Park, RL and Colin Castleman. If you want to know more about the Russian Revolution, well this video is part of a playlist called Revolutionary Russia. The full playlist, you can find it right here. Consider of supporting me via Patreon so I can make more in-depth videos about this and other topics. I want to thank you for watching. 
Later.